Yogi Clan, welcome back to Yogi Cycle Service. So this weekend, I went to the Harley Davidson dealer. It's probably been the first time I've gone to the Harley dealer. I just don't really go to the dealer much. So probably the first time really, and I, I've probably gone twice in the past year. None of which I really looked at motorcycles because I'm not really in the market to buy a motorcycle. The motorcycle that I'm on, named Big Bertha, is a 2014 Ultra Limited. Now this bike has 76,315 miles on it. And let me tell you, she runs pretty darn good. I'm really impressed with the performance of this bike and the maintenance routines on this bike, you know? Things have been working like they should, as they should. And uh, she's still in pretty good shape. So long story short, it's paid off. I'm not in the market to buy a new bike. So let's talk about buying a new bike for a minute because I kind of want to give some thoughts on the 2021 models and what the heck is Harley doing? That's my question. What in the world is Harley doing with an electric bike and now the Pan Am bike? What is up with that Harley Davidson? That's what I want to know. If you're new here to Yogi Cycle Service, I thank you for stopping by and checking out this video. Here at Yogi Cycle Service, we do motorcycle stuff and talk about motorcycle things. We make moto vlogs, we do wrenching, we do service, we do maintenance, or just really anything Yogi related. And hey, I'm Yogi, and I thank you for stopping by. If you're not subscribed, I ask you to check out my channel, see if there are any other videos you like, surf around if you do. If you like them, give them a thumbs up and mash that subscribe button. If you're a returning subscriber, I thank you for stopping by and checking out this video and supporting this channel here. Don't forget, merch down in the comments below. Well, it's not really in the comments, it's in the body of the description of the video. Get you some cool Yogi swag. Help support the channel. But let's talk about Harley Davidson. So I will start off by saying this. We are just your normal, normal American family, making a normal American family income. So if I were to buy this bike today, an Ultra Limited, you know, I'm paying somewhere between twenty-five and probably closer to thirty thousand dollars. Maybe for a Ultra that's not a Limited, maybe you're closer to the twenty-five area. I honestly don't really know, but what I do know is it's expensive, right? It's really expensive, and for somebody who's, you know, a middle middle age, middle America, middle of the road, everything, you know, to be able to buy something that you, that is considered a luxury item and spend $30,000 on that, uh, for some of us, a, a little bit of a hard pill to swallow. Now, for somebody like me, who I ride motorcycles, not every day, I do have a work truck, so I don't ride motorcycles every day, but I ride them a lot of days, right? 20 years, I've gone on 150, 160,000 miles. But this bike is paid for. And if the engine goes out on it, I very well just may get a new engine and put a new engine in and keep running it. Then the wheels fall off. Then I'll get new wheels and put new wheels on it and keep rolling. Point is this, I was there, I was looking, I'm, I'm very interested in a road glide. I've ridden them a few times, but not for, you know, buddy's bikes for around town, you know, a couple little test rides working on bikes in the shop, but I haven't ridden one for like long term, you know? So I would really like to get my hands on a, a road glide for long term riding. But I really don't want to trade this bike in and have a payment. I really don't want to do that. So, and if I do, I don't want it to be a payment on $30,000. You know, I know of a used cycle shop down in South Carolina, just maybe about 20 minutes north of Columbia, that I can go there and buy a used bike, maybe two years old, and save eight, eight, ten grand on it just because it's two years old. That's probably the way I'd go over a brand new Harley. Because looking at the 2021 stock Road Glide Ultra, so very many of the same features that are on this bike are exactly the same on that bike. So it's like a stock Ultra with all the uh, limited bells and whistles, right? So I'd be getting the exact same stuff on that bike that I have the cruise control, the heated grips, the speakers with the sound in the back, 
you know, a couple other things like that. Now, if I were to guess, I would say that bike is probably somewhere between 25 grand and 30 grand. I'd rather buy it a year or two old and then put on there one I want to put on. But here's the big thing I'm trying to get to. Parked right next to it was a CVO, a 2021 CVO, and everyone's drooling over this CVO, right? So I look at the CVO, I'm like, really, what do you get? All right, so it has the, the typical fixed nose fairing like you'd find on any road guy. Trim detail that goes basically from the fairing down to the frame where the floorboard is, like a fixed fairing, like a little wind deflector type thing. Yeah, that's great, sure. It's got a fancy paint job, yeah, great, that's sure. But it had a spoke front wheel, a mag rim, but it had spokes that went down into like little brackets on the mag that held it in place. So, so you can run a tubeless tire on there, you don't need tubes. Like the salesman said, you either love it or you hate it. But I bet you that Joker is probably close to $45,000. So what are you paying for? You're paying for that cute little wind deflector trim piece. You're paying for that. You're paying for a fancy paint job, which honestly, the black road glide that was next to it, I kind of prefer that more. A 117 cubic inch engine, the road glide was a 114. Is that three more cubic inches plus the fancy paint job? Maybe a little bit beefed up stereo system. All that to say for $15,000 more, to finance $15,000 more for that, is it really worth it? For somebody who maybe doesn't know parts, doesn't know what combination of parts work together, the answer may be yes. For somebody like me who, hey, all black is fine with me. <laughs> and sorry, I don't want Screaming Eagle exhaust. I don't want a Screaming Eagle intake. I don't want Screaming Eagle cams, you know. Maybe I want an s, &S intake. Maybe I want an s, s cam. Maybe I want a Vance and Hines exhaust. Maybe I want a Samson exhaust. Or something different. $45,000. I guess that's really the point of this video. What the heck, Ollie? $45,000. I thought Harley Davidson was meant for the average Joe. I, I thought that's what Harley used to be, for the working man. To me, it seems like Harley Davidson is no longer for the working man. You got a $30,000 electric bike. $30,000 electric bike. You know, I can't take that on a cross country trip. I don't think I can. What's the range on it? 100 some miles or something? I don't know. I haven't done my homework to research. I have a feeling you're gonna have to stop and wait for those batteries to charge. And it's gonna take you a long time to get cross country. Basically what I'm saying is, what the heck is Harley doing? What are you doing, Harley? You eliminated the dyna line. You introduced a $30,000 electric bike and now you brought this Pan Am bike. What part of your customer base that you have in America wants a Pan Am bike? Not anybody I've talked to. I don't know. Sure, it's a cool concept. I can't imagine what the price tag is on that. I heard it has a lot of cool bells and whistles, a lot of technology in it, and I, I just wonder where Harley's direction is going, what their thought line is. Now, I'm not saying, you know, hey, let's never improve the Harley bike. Let's never make upgrades. Let's never, let's never be innovative. You know, let's be a market follower, not a market leader. I'm not saying that. I, I definitely think they need to set trends, stop following trends. They need to remember who their core customer base is. Now I realize there are many companies out there still trying to copy them. You know, still trying to copy the Rogue Guy platform, still trying to copy the Ultra Classic platform. It is a great, platform and I realized that you know when they came up with the Mount Rushmore series like this bike is you know they changed some things around on it it's a great platform they decided to beef it up so they threw a Milwaukee 8 engine in it with the same platform but the, the 2021 models really have the exact same bells and features that this this bike does 
except the screen now is touch, you know, there's no buttons on the screen. It's, it's completely a touch screen where this still has the home, the favorites, the navigation, and the mute. I realize it's a motorcycle, really. How much stuff can you put on a motorcycle? I, I get that too. But eliminating the Dyna line, introducing an electric bike that's way overpriced, and the rest of their bikes are just so darn expensive, it makes it hard for someone like me to justify and stomach a payment. I don't understand where Harley is going, what their direction is, what they're thinking, but I really wish that they would remember their core base. We don't care about commercials, about you giving free Harleys away to people who are actors like Jason Momoa so he can spray paint a brand new free Harley. What a prick. And, you know, giving them away to famous basketball players, famous athletes, famous, you know, social media people. Let's, you know, let's take care of our core group. Let's take care of those bikers who are plumbers, who are electricians, IT guys, who are, you know, working the nine to five, living paycheck to paycheck people, but love, love what Harley stood for at one point in time and what Harley does still stand for. You know, let's, let's, Come on, Harley. I guess I'll end my rant there. Cause I really didn't. If you, Mom always say, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. I just don't understand where Harley's going. I appreciate the effort, but it seems like you're just grasping at straws right now. We need to stop grasping at straws and start getting back on track. And you know what? As a commitment to that, I might just use some of my Robin Hoods my Robin Hood stock account to buy some Harley shares because I have a feeling their price value is very low. It's probably not too high right now. I need to look that up. But you know what? I love, I love Harley Davidson. I love my bikes. Maybe I should sew into them and put into them also. Buy a few shares of their stock and hope that they can figure it out and get their heads out of the sand and, and realize who their customer base is and give the customer base what they're looking for. Affordable motorcycles that are reliable and are Harleys. You know, it's one big thing I've noticed between Harley and Indian. Man, this thing's made of metal. And I can't stand a, a red start and stop switch. That just screams metric to me. That's what Indian has. And it feels like Indian is so much more plastic than it is metal. Harleys still feel like a metal, man-made America machine. And we need, and I, I would love for them to be able to maintain that and not cripple it through trying to cater to a group of people that really doesn't care. There you go, ran over, I'm done, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for joining Yogi Cycle Service. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.